Hi guys, hope you're good since last video. So we're gonna start a new playlist about Rust, as I believe that in the future Python is gonna be quicker thanks to Rust. So we'll be rusting. Let's start with the documentation here. So what we're gonna do first, we're gonna go through the book just to, to do this installation. That's it. And after all of the rest, we're gonna be working on VS Code or the uh, Ubuntu terminal. So it's just one command. Install Rust and Cargo. We're back here into our terminal. We put the command in and we're gonna install it. So here are the first information. Compiler to Rust programming language. So this is the RustUp metadata, the toolchain. So I'm discovering with you. Home credit is in RustUp. Cargo home directory dot cargo. Okay. And the cargo home environment variable can be modified. We can change the home. Cargo Rust C and RustUp. So those are the pin all the binaries cargo bin and the pass environment variable in the dot profile and bash rc so to uninstall a step self uninstall so it has detected it's we on linux and it's going to be modifying the pass good so we're going to process with the standard installation by just pressing enter. We're pressing enter and it's going to start doing his, uh, his job, placing those uh, binaries. It is done pretty quick. So what does it say here? Okay, we can check the bash rc so the bash rc last line have been updated so we got a sourcing here of the cargo environment variables that's good just gonna check a little bit more what does it says cargo home so it's just a validation of the installation so let's run cargo. Doesn't work. Rust up. So the binaries won't work because we need to close the terminal and open it. Or we can just source the bash RC. So I'll be losing the name that I had. Credit is in resting life. Back to the name of the server. So here I'm running cargo. We see that it works. So the installation has been successful. We can start using it. We can maybe discover a little bit more about those different paths. So here we have the bin folder on the end file. Let's just uh, check what is in the bin. So we have all the binaries. Rossi has promised. We have uh, some other ones, we have also the rest up, and the cargo is here. That's perfect, that's what we wanted. Installation is done, we can clear this and go into some little explanation very quick. So you're coming from Python, so the numbers, the booleans, true and false, like in Python. We have a positive ints and we have a positive and negative ints. So depending on the side, U8, U16, U32, 64, or I. We have the floats. We have the stores, that's how I called it. Vectors, like the list in Python. And we have the hash maps, like our Python dictionaries, key value pairs. So this is just to be, uh, to have the 
minimal uh, information about uh, those uh, basics. So numbers, stores, and maybe we need also to check about uh, text. So rest text. We have a mutable text, the string with a capital S. And we have the STRs, which are immutable. They represent a slice of the string. So a part of it, or the full string also. So the difference is uh, about memory allocation, stack and heaps, and uh, referencing the slice and everything, but we're not going to go into those headaches for the moment. Uh, the rest uh, mutability. So by default, the variables are immutable. So you need to use the mute keyword to uh, make this variable mutable. So for example, here for the text, to add some more text to it or to, uh, to make it shorter just to modify the size of it. Let's go into our terminal. So on the left side, you have Shibuya. On the right side, you have Rust. So we'll be resting on the right side. Hope that you get the attention on the right side. Creditizens, resting life. So we're going to make a directory. Resting. Going to do everything from the beginning. It will be an empty directory. Let's do a little ls, there's nothing in. I'm gonna clear this and we are going to initialize with cargo in it. Okay, so now we have uh, the cargo the thermal configuration file with the package, the name, version, edition, dependencies. So this is the main config file, which is at the root of your directory. We're going to add dependencies. So cargo add is the command when you add a, a dependency. Here, for example, adding this uh, package chrono for the time, if you want to make uh, some sleep time in your code. Or... So this one here. We just add it. What we want to show here is that the dependency in the main toml file will be updated with the package that you have added. This is like our pip install in Python. So add, remove, cargo. So we can also use the cargo remove to remove that package. So chrono. We can check and it's not here anymore. So it's empty now of dependencies. There's no dependencies. That's good. So we can add and get rid of uh, some dependencies. But I'm going to just add it back. We might need to use it in the future. Okay. And it's back here. So this is for the dependencies. So if you find any uh, dependency package that you want to add, you can use that command. Cargo add. Add it. Compiling code. So main.rs. It's in the source folder. So this comes with the, the initialization of the directory using cardo in it. We're going to cd into it. We're going to check what is in the file. This is the hello world that we have. We can play with it a bit. We can go in. We are beginners. We don't know anything. We can just change it, customize it for us. Mangakisa Shibuya. So let's do first compilation so the function main let's just add here some comments so we're gonna be slow going step by step and checking what we can learn from it so from the main function 
the compiler compiles <laughs> so this is the the main function that will be run so the compiler is gonna find this function and uh, run it to check if the code is fine or not with the dependencies and everything and uh, just for the commenting so it looks like a bit like in javascript you can use double uh, slash or line commenting or multi-line commenting using slash start and start slash to close it so for comments I'm just going to put it like that and uh, because I think you don't see it in blue after what can we say here okay semicolon or not before compiling just let's check this so like in javascript you add the semicolon at the end of uh, the line but not always as you can see here I'm gonna where is it I didn't run it so cargo run so we get it compiled so congratulations that's the first uh, compiling uh, code without any error so now we can see that we didn't use any semicolon so we can say here just to learn about it that's the last one so it's the last line in the function the main function so it works for any other function so it's implicitly it will uh, implicitly run it so we don't need uh, to add the semicolon when it's when it's the last line but so there's a big but here we need to check that uh, it is the last line so for the other lines I'm going to show you here with uh, an example let's just make it two for the indentation so println we're going to change the message Let's put a message that is going to be explaining the, uh, the outcome. Error. If you omit the semicolon. So a very simple message. If you omit the semicolon, in any other line of the function, so has they not the last line of the function semicolon or not so we don't put semicolon and we're gonna compile it cargo run and we got an error oh no that's dramatic so let's stop uh, coding in rust with too many errors in the compiler so you can see here that it's well explained it tells us where to add uh, the semicolon so that's what I like about Rust is the compiler. So if you're a beginner, that's the compiler that you want to have, as it uh, helps you to, uh, to identify where is the error. So not every time you can find it like that so easily. But here, as we're learning and uh, we are beginners, we can just see the, the normal stuff. So here we just added the semicolon and it works. And what we learned here is the last one. We don't need to add the semicolon, the last line, as it's going to be executed. It's an implicit execution. So the side function, let's add some side functions and see how we can handle that. So we just create a function. 
event event number and we're gonna add the number as a parameter so in the rest you need to use the typing you need to say which kind of character it is it will be a u64 means it's a positive integer it's gonna return a boolean which is mean which means it's gonna return true or false number modulo 2 it's equal to 0 don't need the semicolon just one line that's the last line of the function so we don't need the semicolon here after you use the arrow just to say what the function is going to return so it's going to be returning a boolean even number we say the number is a u64 and here in the main function you can just call the function if you want or you can use the println we're going to use println that's what we're going to do here a kind of formatting of the print so we use curly braces and the result of the function is going to be printed inside those curly braces so it's going to be uh, interpreted inside even number of 10 so uh, the print ln the last one i put a, a semicolon but i don't need it but i'm just going to pull it because i know that i'm going to forget <laughs> to put it in the other ones in those lines so to not get compiler errors for stuff like that so here it says true cargo run so this is true it's an even number a boolean so we're just gonna get true or false as a return value let's change it for 11 so we're expecting it to say false and here it's false we got our boolean false module and imports so we're going slowly but we need that we need to have some uh, side uh, files to put those functions in some other files so we're going to create a new file we're going to call it even number so ev number dot eras so rs will be the the file name that you use you always put dot rs at the end so we put the function that we used before that we want to use it as a module so as a function that is going to be exported and used in the main rs even number here main so we go into the main we get rid of the function so we have the println which is referencing that function so we need to see it step by step is it going to work like that Let's do a cargo run and we got an error not found in this scope so what is inside the function is a scope so everything is scoped in the rust so we need to uh, notify that function as a public function so here we need to use the keyword pub as everything is private so private that means that when we use this function in another file like that uh, it can't be discovered unless we uh, say that it's public so now we add this keyword pub to make it exportable so discoverable Now that we added this pub like public as everything is private just to, uh, to say that everything is private by default so we need to uh, allow it to be uh, discovered and make it uh, public now it's public that's good but is it enough Let's save this. 
we got the public function. It's not enough. I'll just give you the answer. It's not enough. We need here to import it. Like in Python, you will use import for the module. So here we use the keyword mod to reference that uh, module. So module means that's the, the name of the, the file where the function is stored. So that it's imported here. So what am I doing here? We use the mod. Let me get rid of this main fn of function. So fn is like your def in uh, df in uh, Python. Okay, so that's the name of the, the file, ev underscore num. And here you need to add the semicolon. So we need the semicolon here when we're importing a module. Okay, so the comment is closed. And uh, here in the println, what we need to do, we need to use this module and use the dot notation like in uh, Python. But in Rust, you're gonna use you're gonna use those uh, colons, so double colon. It's like a dot in Python. So here we're just gonna put in a comment. Double colons like dot in Python. So now the function can be uh, discovered by the compiler as a module. It can be printed through the main function. Okay. Okay. Now we're done here. We got the dot notation, which is the double semicolon, double colon, I mean. And here, uh, let's put 12. So we're expecting true, expecting uh, not to have any error in the compiler, which is good. We got the true, no errors in the compiler. Let's try another value. 13 and we got the files here that's good so that's good for an introduction to rust we've seen some uh, different little concepts and uh, how to start playing with it adding your own function putting it in a module you know the different types, the strings, you know the numbers, the floats, the vectors. We haven't used it yet, but we're gonna use it in the coming videos. So I hope that you like this introduction. We're gonna be discovering it step by step. I'm not sure yet about the, the format I'm gonna use. Here I'm just trying this format. Uh, I might be just uh, using a full screen format next time, I will see. So like and subscribe and uh, tell me in the comment section what you prefer. See you next time.